I'm here today to talk about peer-to-peer -peer and how it's being used by malware today. It is becoming much more popular to be used by malware as it's more resilient and more robust in terms of protecting the operator from takedown uh, in today's marketplace. So traditional malware uh, typically uh, talks back to a centralized command and control cloud, shall we say, that's run by the malware operator. And you have a victim, or a, a set of victims that are out here in the world that access that cloud through a DNS server. They will request an IP address from the DNS server, get the IP address back, and talk back to the malware operator. Now, over the years, you know, very early days, this was the traditional approach that they would go through. They would either hard code this address in, or they'd use a single or a list of known domains to go out and get that IP address. Over time, this became a little more complex as they became more protective of their infrastructure. Uh, they went through a period of time where there was fast fluxing or IP fluxing where they would have a list of IP addresses here to help hide this area because they'd use a large number of IP addresses. And they've also used something known as domain generation algorithms or DGA to use a large list of domains to get back to a small list of IP addresses. So this has worked very well, uh, but at the same time they still have the centralized infrastructure that is susceptible to attack. Over the last few years, we've been seeing a change in how the malware is evolving, and we're seeing more and more peer-to-peer -peer traffic being used uh, for this, this command and control infrastructure. You still have your same victims down here in the world, but the operator, instead of having a centralized network, makes use of other victims to set up a distributed command and control uh, infrastructure to which these victims will talk and then eventually it will come back to the operator at some point in time and some distance away in terms of number of hops so that everything that's in the command and control structure is actually a victim computer that is being operated whereas uh, before there was this direct link that could be tied back and forth. Uh, one of the more popular peer-to-peer uh, -peer bots today is Zero Access and it is a true peer-to-peer piece of malware. It only uses peer-to-peer -peer for its communication. And the Zero Access Bot is uh, typical, I guess, in that it has two tiers of um, malware-infected hosts. One is what are typically called supernodes. And the supernodes are, uh, another way to think about these as being routable nodes. Uh, they are outside of firewalls, not behind a NAT, and they can both accept and receive commands at all times so that they are always online or maybe connected, whenever they're up, they're connected to the network, and they're always sharing commands back and forth across this distribution network. Your second tier is a set of hosts that are typically behind a NAT or a firewall, and they cannot receive inbound commands, but they can initiate connections out to the supernode. The supernode can then respond with commands back to these. So this makes this class of node unable to communicate amongst themselves, but they can communicate back to the supernode. The operator can push commands, downloads, retrieve information, whatever, from the supernodes, and these are relayed down or back up from the uh, infected victims here. Um, One of the uh, differences in these two uh, layers of the architecture is that these commands, commands that are sent to the supernodes are, are shared amongst themselves. It's almost a, uh, uh, what's a good word for it, a, a, a social network as it were. They typically just propagate the messages back and forth. Uh, they typically do not use a uh, routing table anymore. They're typically a an unstructured peer-to-peer, -peer. Uh, but the difference here is that the victims have to call in, and these victims may be programmed to call in once an hour, once every 20 minutes, once a day, even less often if they've been parked for a while, so that 
commands that are sent to and from the super nodes can be executed re relatively quickly. Commands going to the second tier may take a while until it propagates down to the network. So that's uh, really uh, the new architecture of a lot of the malware that's coming out today. And it's very difficult for us to track back to find out who the operator is or to tear these networks down because you essentially have to black or uh, black hole all of the supernodes to, to disconnect the network. So uh, the supernodes, typically uh, this connection between nodes, they maintain a list of 256, in the case of zero access anyway, uh, hosts that it can talk to. So that there's, you know, if a node goes down, the chain is not really broken. This is, and it's really not a linear, this is, this is more of a cloud type connection. so that these guys are all talking to each other. So loss of a single network or even loss of a, a large group of the network, it's almost impossible to tear everything down because there's just so many connections to be broken. 